Hi everyone and welcome, it's Steve Johnson here, Chief Investment Officer at Forager Funds. We're up to our necks in reporting season, uh, so everyone's busy and you've got me on my own today, but I just thought I'd give you a quick update on our Forager Australian Shares Fund as we go through this very busy period of reporting season. Look, if you're keeping an eye on the, the NAV that we report every day, you'll notice that there hasn't been much movement throughout the whole month of August. And really that's continued on this week. There's been a few ups and downs across the portfolio, but largely not a lot of net movement. I think that's a function of a lot of companies these days uh, pre-releasing their results. And if there is news to be had, they're getting it out there pretty early. Uh, a lot of focus on continuous disclosure laws and rules out there. And I think just in the uncertain environment that we've had around COVID, we're getting pretty regular updates from companies. So reporting season tends to be less surprises. And then I think the other thing is that the, the outlook environment is again very uncertain with both Australia uh, and New Zealand or large parts of both of those countries. Under lockdown again, a lot of companies are saying they're not sure uh, what the future holds. Look, looking across our portfolio, I think there's a couple of key themes that apply to the wider economy out there. There's a lot less panic this time around than the first lockdowns in March 2020. We got that message pretty clearly from Seven West Media, who reported uh, late last week, and NZME, which owns the New Zealand Herald, uh, who reported this morning, both of them saying large advertisers on Channel 7 and, and to NZME are not really pulling their advertising the way they did last time. There's a bit of uncertainty out there, but I think there's a lot more confidence that people know how things unfold this time and even within their own businesses, we all know what working from home looks like and it's happened far smoother. So I think on the indirect side of things, we're definitely seeing less impacts. Those businesses that are directly affected though, there's less government support this time around. And I think from a stock market perspective, we were hoping our travel related stocks and AMA, for example, which owns smash repairs, that 2022 was going to be a nice clean year and that investors would get to see how much money these businesses can make. That's pretty clearly been pushed back to 2023 now. 2022 is going to be messy again. We'll have more results with COVID impacts. And AMA out this morning saying a lot of their smash repairs are closed. They've had to lay off a fairly significant number of people and that is a function of just less kilometers being driven on our roads. So I think it's a delayed value realization story, certainly for those businesses, but largely the larger companies in our economy seem to be handling this quite well. Uh, we'll be back. I'll get Alex and Gaston on over the next couple of weeks to talk about some of the specific companies in our portfolio and highlights and lowlights. One little tech business that we own that reported a really interesting result today was ReadyTech. It was a fairly recent private equity float, so plenty of reasons to be skeptical of that business, but they're certainly kicking some goals. We'll give you an update on that and plenty more. Thanks for tuning in.